Welcome friends, welcome back to the HashiCorp Certified Terraform Associate. Here we will see all the questions with the real-time use case and we will decode the answer for the certificate exam. So the first question is, when using constraint expression to signify a version of a provider, which of the following are valid provider versions that satisfy the expression found in the following code snippet? Select 2. Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform 1.2.3 Option B. Terraform 1.2.9 Option C. Terraform 1.3.1 Option D. Terraform 1.3.0 Let's see the answer. And the right answer are. Option A. Terraform 1.2.3 and option B Terraform 1.2.9. Each condition consists of an operator and a version number. Allows only the rightmost version component to increment. This format is referred to as the pessimistic constraint operator. For example, to allow new patch releases within a specific minor release, use the full version number, tilde 1.0.4. Allows Terraform to install 1.0.5 and 1.0.10, but not 1.1.0. Tilde 1.1 allows Terraform to install 1.2 and 1.10, but not 2.0. Move to the second question. Which of the following is a primary component of Terraform's architecture? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, controller. Option B, module. Option C, resource. Option D, node. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C, resource. Terraform's primary components include resources, modules, and providers. Resources are the fundamental building blocks. To the third question. What is the primary purpose of the Terraform init command? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. To initialize a new configuration. Option B. To apply the configuration changes. Option C. To validate the configuration. Option D. To destroy the resources. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. To initialize a new configuration. Terraform init initializes the configuration and downloads the necessary provider plugins. Move to the fourth question. Which file is used to define the provider configurations in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. A. Main.tf. Option B. Provider.tf. Option C. Variables.tf. Option D. Terraform.tf vars. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Provider.tf. While provider configurations can be included in any. TF file. It is common practice to use provider. TF for clarity. Let's move to the fifth question. What command should you use to see the execution plan for your configuration? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform show. Option B. Terraform validate. Option C. Terraform plan. Option D. Terraform apply. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Terraform plan. Terraform plan creates an execution plan showing what actions Terraform will take to reach the desired state. Let's move to the sixth question. How does Terraform handle infrastructure drift? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. By automatically correcting the drift. Option B. By notifying the user. Option C. By running Terraform refresh. Option D. By running Terraform apply. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. By notifying the user. Terraform does not automatically correct drift, but provides information about it when running Terraform plan or Terraform apply. Let's move to the seven question. What does the Terraform state command do? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Manages state files. Option B. Displays the current state. Option C. Creates a new state. Option D. Deletes the state file. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Manages state files. Terraform state commands are used to view and manipulate the state files directly. Let's move to the 8 question. Which of the following is not a backend supported by Terraform for storing state files? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. S3. Option B. PostgreSQL. Option C. Azure Blob Storage. Option D. Local File. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. PostgreSQL. Terraform does not support PostgreSQL as a backend for state files. Let's move to the 9 question. What is the function of the Terraform apply command? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. To create an execution plan. Option B. To apply changes required to reach the desired state. Option C. To initialize the configuration. Option D. To destroy all resources. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. To apply changes required to reach the desired state. Terraform apply applies the changes required to achieve the desired state as defined in the configuration. Let's move to the 10 question. Which file extension is commonly used for Terraform configuration files? Let's see the option and the options are. 
Option A, dot yam. Option B, dot JSON. Option C, dot HCL. Option D, dot TF. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is, Option D, dot TF. Terraform configuration files commonly have a dot TF extension. Let's move to the 11th question. What is a module in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, a single resource definition. Option B, a collection of resource definitions and configurations. Option C, a state management tool. Option D, a cloud provider. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B, a collection of resource definitions and configurations. Modules are reusable configurations that can include multiple resources. Let's move to the 12 question. Which Terraform command is used to remove all resources defined in the configuration? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform delete. Option B. Terraform remove. Option C. Terraform destroy. Option D. Terraform clean. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Terraform destroy. Terraform destroy removes all resources defined in the configuration. Let's move to the 13 question. What is the default directory where Terraform looks for modules? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Dot modules. Option B. Dot eTerraform modules. Option C. Dot eTerraform modules. Option D. Dot module files. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Dot Terraform modules. Terraform stores downloaded modules in Terraform a modules directory. Let's move to the 14 question. How can you provide values for variables in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, through the CLI only. Option B, using environment variables only. Option C, through a Terraform, TFRs file, CLI, or environment variables. Option D, only through a Terraform, TFRs file. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C, through a Terraform, TFRs file, CLI, or environment variables. Variables can be set in multiple ways including TFRs files, CLI arguments, and environment variables. Let's move to the 15 question. What does the Terraform FMT command do? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Validates the configuration. Option B. Formats the configuration files to a canonical format. Option C. Displays the execution plan. Option D. Initializes the configuration. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Formats the configuration files to a canonical format. The Terraform FMT command is used to format Terraform configuration files consistently and according to the Terraform language style conventions. Let's move to the 16 question. Which of the following commands can be used to check the syntax and validity of Terraform configurations? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform check. Option B. Terraform validate. Option C. Terraform plan. Option D. Terraform in it. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Terraform validate. Terraform validate checks the syntax and validity of Terraform configurations without interacting with any external resources. Let's move to the 17 question. What is the purpose of the output block in a Terraform configuration? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, to define input variables. Option B, to output values to be used in other configurations. Option C, to display the execution plan. Option D, to initialize the configuration. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B, to output values to be used in other configurations. The output block is used to define output variables that can be used to share information between configurations configurations or display specific values after Terraform runs. Let's move to the 18 question. Which of the following is not a valid Terraform data source? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. AWS underscore Amy. Option B. Azurum underscore virtual underscore machine. Option C. Google underscore compute underscore instance. Option D. Docker underscore container. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D. Docker underscore container. While AWS underscore Amy. Azurum underscore virtual underscore machine. And Google underscore compute underscore instance are valid Terraform data data sources. Docker underscore container is a resource, not a data source. Let's move to the 19 question. How can you define a reusable piece of configuration in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. By using a resource. Option B. By using a data source. Option C. By using a module. Option D. By using a provider. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. By using a module. Modules allow you to encapsulate and reuse configurations, making it easier to manage and share Terraform code. Let's move to the 20 question. What is the purpose of the Terraform import command? 
Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, to import existing infrastructure into Terraform. Option B, to import modules. Option C, to import provider configurations. Option D, to import variable values. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A, to import existing infrastructure into Terraform. Terraform import brings existing infrastructure under Terraform management by associating it with resources defined in the Terraform configuration. Let's move to the 21 question. What happens if you run Terraform apply without an execution plan? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform will create a plan and prompt for confirmation. Option B. Terraform will apply the last saved plan. Option C. Terraform will show an error. Option D. Terraform will only validate the configuration. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Terraform will create a plan and prompt for confirmation. If no execution plan is provided. Terraform apply will create a new plan and ask for user confirmation before proceeding. Let's move to the 22 question. Which block is used to specify the configuration of a resource in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Provider. Option B. Variable. Option C. Resource. Option D. Module. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Resource. The resource block is used to define the configuration of a resource in Terraform. Let's move to the 23 question. What is the default name of the state file in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform. TF state. Option B. State file. TF. Option C. Terraform underscore state. TF. Option D. TF state. TF. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Terraform. TF state. By default, Terraform saves the state file as Terraform. TF state in the current working directory. Let's move to the 24 question. How can you reference the attributes of a resource in another resource? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. By using the resource name directly. Option B. By using the resource ID. Option C. By using output variables. Option D. By using interpolation syntax. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D. By using interpolation syntax. You can reference attributes of a resource in another resource using interpolation syntax. Like dollar, resource underscore type, resource underscore name, attribute. Let's move to the 25 question. Which command is used to create a snapshot of the state file? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform backup. Option B. Terraform state snapshot. Option C. Terraform state. Option D. Terraform save. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Terraform state. The Terraform state command allows you to manipulate the state file, including creating snapshots for backup purposes. Let's move to the 26 question. What is the primary purpose of the Terraform refresh command? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. To update the state file with the real infrastructure. Option B. To refresh the configuration. Option C. To update provider plugins. Option D. To update provider plugins. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. To update the state file with the real infrastructure. Terraform refresh updates the state file to match the real infrastructure, syncing Terraform's view with the actual state of resources. Let's move to the 27 question. Which of the following is not an advantage of using Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Infrastructure as code. Option B. Version control for infrastructure. Option C. Automatic drift correction. Option D. Multi-cloud support. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Automatic drift correction. Terraform does not automatically correct drift. Instead, it detects drift and shows it during Terraform plan or Terraform apply. Let's move to the 28 question. What type of backend is most commonly used for remote state storage? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Local backend. Option B. Remote backend. Option C. HTTP backend. Option D. Terraform cloud. Let's see the answer and the right answer is option D. Terraform cloud. Terraform Cloud is a common backend for remote state storage, offering state locking and consistency checks. Let's move to the 29 question. How does Terraform ensure consistency of the state file across multiple team members? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. By locking the state file during operations. Option B. By using a local state file. Option C. By not allowing remote state. Option D. By using environment variables. Let's see the answer and the right answer is option A. By locking the state file during operations. Terraform uses state locking to prevent concurrent operations that could cause state corruption, ensuring consistency across team members. 
Let's move to the 30 question is, which of the following is true about the Terraform workspace command? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, it is used to manage multiple state files. Option B, it is used to manage multiple configurations. Option C, it is used to manage multiple providers. Option D, it is used to manage multiple modules. Let's see the answer and the right answer is option A. It is used to manage multiple state files. Terraform workspace commands are used to create, select, and manage multiple workspaces, each with its own state file. Let's move to the 31 question. What is the purpose of a backend in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, to define resource configurations. Option B, to provide input variables. Option C, to specify how state is loaded and stored. Option D, to configure provider settings. Let's see the answer and the right answer is option C, to specify how state is loaded and stored. The backend configuration in Terraform determines how state data is loaded and stored, supporting various remote storage solutions for state management. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.